case my jokes aren't funny, I have my own laugh track here. So, okay, um, I'm, uh, I'm Tom Marioni, and this is my work in here, in this room. And uh, I'm going to uh, make a, a drawing, uh, and then I'm going to uh, talk. I'm going to give you an art history lesson, and I'm going to tell a couple of uh, jokes that might be dumb, and, but, but uh, I got my own laptop. Okay. I have to wear a glove. One time I did it without a glove and, and there was blood on the wall because my knuckle would rub, rub against the wall. Okay. Uh, this is, this is, there's a label. This is called the uh, out of body freehand circle. It's a measurement of my reach. And um, it's inspired by Leonardo da Vinci's diagram of man, which is measurement of, of, a, of a man. And uh, so, um, I have some notes here that I'm going to refer to. I'm not going to read the notes. I saw Henny Youngman perform in, in San Francisco all of years ago, uh, just before just before he died, I mean, like, you know, a month before. And um, he was in his 90s at that time. And he couldn't remember all his jokes that he'd been telling all his life. And there was a guy in the front with a cue card, you know, that would remind him of the jokes. And, and you could hear the guy call up the beginning of the joke to Henry, Henry Youngman. Then he, would, then he would tell the joke. And there was one time he called up the thing and um, he, he didn't quite hear him. Finally, the guy in the audience told the entire joke, and then Henny Youngman repeated it. <laughs> so, I've been looking forward to this event since 4.30 today. <laughs> I, I flew down here from San Francisco, that's where I live. And um, uh, I, I, when I got to the airport, I, was, I had three pieces of luggage, and I said I want one, one to go to Denver, one to go to Colorado Springs, and one to go to, to uh, Boulder. And the, they said, you can't do that. And I said, you did it last week. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm on, I'm on the airplane. And um, the, the, the stewardess says, in a case of uh, emergency, the, the uh, oxygen Mask will fall down for three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and in case of a water landing, the seat cushions that are under your seat are yours to keep with our compliments. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in the airplane, and there's there's some baby crying, and and uh, I was and I, I thought the reason the reason babies cry on airplanes is because they're upset about gay marriage. <laughs> So anyway, there's a boy, 
there's a boy in the, in the seat behind me. Kick, keeps kicking my seat through the whole flight, you know. And then I, um, at, at, at that point, I was all in favor of late-term abortion up to the fifth <laughs> grade. <laughs> How many people believe in telekinesis? Raise my hand. <laughs> okay, what we have here is the After Drinking Beer with Friends of the Highest Form of Art, which I made uh, originally in the Oakland Museum in California in 1970, almost half a century ago. And I've been doing it ever since uh, in, in Europe, Japan, and in the U.S. And, um, so uh, now this is like, I don't know, the, 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 at least the 50th time I've done this. And, it's, um, and, it, and it's, it's a piece, I think, that will always be about the moment. After I'm dead, I assume maybe it'll, it'll still be repeated somewhere. It'll always be about the moment. So uh, it's not going to ever be dated, you know. And uh, speaking of beer, this is a quote from Benjamin Franklin. Beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. <laughs> it's a Benjamin Franklin uh, quote. Sometimes when I'm traveling, you know, people ask me, what do I do? I say, I make psychic sculpture. And they say, what is that? And I say, it'll come to you. <laughs> okay, I've got a little art, art history lesson for you. I'm sure you don't need it, but I'm going to go anyway. Um, I have a theory that in the seventh year of every decade, the next decade is predicted in art. So in, two, in, in 1907, Picasso invented Cubism, and that was the, the art of the, of, the, of the next decade, you know. 1917, Marcel Duchamp exhibited his famous uh, urinal called Fountain, and that was the beginning of the Dada period, which was a kind of an anti-art uh, movement. And then in, uh, in um, 1927, Thomas R. Benton was the... Uh, one of the originators of the, of the regional movement, you know, which was an American, American movement. It happened in Europe. It was the beginning of surrealism. So in, in America, it was regionalism, and, and, uh, and in Europe, it was surrealism. And in 1937, President Roosevelt established the uh, WPA, the Works Project, which was the beginning of social realism. In 1947, Jackson Pollock did his first abstract drip paintings. Uh, you know, Life Magazine called him Jackson Drippin, who's the inventor of American, American art, really. Um, and and um, that was the beginning of abstract expressionism, which was the art then of the, of the 50s. In 1957, Jess, Jesper Johns and Robert Rauschenberg. Oh. 1967, Saul Witt wrote his manifesto, which was called Sentences on Conceptual Art. And that was the, the beginning of the conceptual art period, which was the art of the 70s, because, you know, it goes back and forth uh, between art about money and then art about philosophy, because it depends on the, on the economy. Basically, when, whenever uh, the economy is good, painting returns again, you know. So, um, 1977, Julian Schnabel did his famous uh, broken plate paintings, which was symbolic of uh, breaking from the past, you know. And, uh, and he was uh, considered the, the beginning of, uh, of neo-expressionist painting, which was the art of the 80s. And then in 1987, Jeff Koons, who was really the, like the son of Andy Warhol, was a neo-pop art that, that was the art of, the, of that era, you know. In 1997, a Belgian artist and a Russian artist both claimed to have invented internet art, which was the art of the, of the first... Uh, of, of the first uh, uh, century uh, of, of, of this of this of this century, and in nineteen in two thousand and seven, I had an exhibition of all circle drawings, and I invented circleism a hundred years after Picasso invented cubism. <laughs> so so I'll tell you a little bit about myself before I go any further. Uh, I was in the Peace and Freedom Party in San Francisco. I founded the Museum of Conceptual Art, which was the first alternative art space in the United States. Uh, I founded the Art Orchestra, Vision Magazine, and uh, I've supported artists, and I'm an artist myself. And do you think I'm known for all of that? And you fucked one sheep. 
<laughs> it's art critic. Art critic came to my studios about 20 years ago. And I said, I'd like your opinion. I'd like your opinion of my work. And he said, it's worthless. And I said, I know, but I'd like to hear it anyway. <laughs> This artist comes home and he finds his house is burned down and the fire firemen are there and he asks the fireman what happened. The fireman says the museum director came to your house, murdered your family and burned your house down. And the artist says, you mean the museum director came to my house? <laughs> This is a cartoon. I'm, I'm going to have to describe it. This was in the New Yorker magazine, I, and this is pretty good. So there's a, there's a, a the title is Afghanistan Ter Terrorist School, and then there's a sign that says Human Bomb Class, and there's four uh, you know, Muslim terrorists. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> so so the, the guy who's the teacher, he's holding a, a detonator, and he's, he's got a dynamite strapped to, to his waist. He says, pay attention because I'm only going to do this once. <laughs> That's a good one. There's a, there's a restaurant in San Francisco called Original Joe's. And it was founded in 1937, the year I was born. And it's my favorite place. It's in North Beach, if you know where that is. It's kind of the Italian section of it of San Francisco. And I'm in there with some of my friends having lunch, and at the other end of the restaurant is Bill Clinton. And he's having, he's having lunch too with some, 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 some people, you know. So I went up to him and I introduced myself, and I said, uh, you would do me a big favor if on your way out you would say hello to me so I could really impress my friends. So he said, okay, you know. So I went back and we're eating lunch, and Bill Clinton comes walking out and he comes right up to my table, and he says, hi, Tom. And I said, not now, Bill. Can't you see I'm eating? <laughs> OK, that's, that's the end of the, of the, of the beer, beer part. <laughs> Okay, this is the philosophy section. By the way, I wrote a book called Beer Art and Philosophy, which should have been here today in the bookstore, but it'll be here you know, maybe tomorrow. And uh, it's from 2003. I wrote it in 2003, but uh, since I'm ahead of my time, it'll seem up to date. <laughs> so a philosopher is a person with no job, but he understands why. <laughs> Philosophy has questions that may never be answered. Religion has answers that may never be questioned. I know I'm God because when I pray to him, I realize I'm talking to myself. I feel sorry for atheists because they have no one to talk to when they're getting a blowjob. <laughs> So, the, 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 there was a nun in, in, the, in, the, in the nunnery, and she, she, she goes in to report to the, to the mother superior that I'm sorry to, to report that we have a case of syphilis. And the mother superior says, oh, I'm so relieved I was getting so tired of the Chablis. <laughs> You know, I, I've been an artist a long time. I was a, actually a child prodigy. You know, at, um, at three, I painted, I, I drew a perfect circle. And then at, uh, at, at uh, four, I painted like Picasso. At five, I understood Duchamp. And at 5.30, I went down to the bar and had a cigar and a whiskey. <laughs> 
The French philosopher, René Descartes, goes into a bar, and the bartender says, would you like a beer? And he says, he says, I think not, and he disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> this guy goes to the Buddhist hot dog stand, and he says, make me one with everything. <laughs> and he gives the guy a $20 bill, and he waits, and he says, where's my change? And the, and the guy says, change comes from within. <laughs> How many Freudian analysts does it take to screw in a light bulb? One to hold the penis, I mean the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> this guy died two weeks ago and nobody told him. <laughs> so I was in, in China and in Japan in the 80s a lot, and I, I studied Chinese calligraphy, and I discovered that when you write something in Chinese, it defines, defines the word. For instance, if you write uh, uh, Chinese, if you write music in Chinese, it's two characters. It's one for sound and one for harmony. And, uh, and, and so when you write it and when you read it, it, it's a definition of it. And when you write art, it's a character for beauty and a character for skill. And the one for beauty is very graceful like this and it looks like, like a female to me. And the one for skill is just rigid and looks like a male to me. So to me, it looks like a man and a woman dancing together. And that's how, for me, uh, uh, the word art is defined in Chinese. And speaking of Chinese, this Chinese couple uh, was in bed and the husband says to the wife, can we do 69 tonight? And the wife says, you mean you want beef and broccoli now? <laughs> That's, that's the end of the philosophy part. <laughs>
and then they translated it back into English and it became accelerated communication when it got translated. <laughs> and all the drawings over on the wall, they're all for sale, in case you didn't know. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna end on a serious, a serious note here. Uh, in 1999, there was a show in, in Oakland, California called Art, What is Art For? And uh, so I, I wrote this list and I, I, they tacked it up on the wall. For beauty, for history, for decorating apartments, for people to laugh at, for imitating nature, for therapy, for seeing in a new way, for an educated audience, for enlightenment, for political agendas, for glorifying the church and the Renaissance, for glorifying the state and communism, for glorifying the rich and capitalism, for recording society in a poetic way. So, thank you. I have a, a three books here. This is a book of, from 07, of all these circles, from an exhibition I have here, I mean, in San Francisco. This is a, this is a book, um, um, Writings on Art, uh, 69 to 99, and it's a lot of my talks and, and my texts from exhibitions I organized because I was a curator at one time. And then I, your art, your art philosophy, and and, uh, and um, that's the beer art philosophy has uh, a lot of good, uh, funny gossip in it, and uh, about the art world and, and and about San Francisco. And this is another thing I forgot. A lot of the work I do is based on a, on the golden rectangle. This is this is a golden rectangle. Right here. <laughs> the golden rectangle is also comes from the golden mean which is the, the, also referred to as sacred geometry. The cathedrals in Egypt and all the great cathedrals, I mean the pyramids in Egypt and the great cathedrals in Europe are all, all, all based on this kind, of, this kind of geometry. So this also has to do with how a seashell grows and how far, wide, how far apart your eyes are and everything. So if you do something with, with, uh, that has the proportions of things in nature, it's gonna have good proportions. Okay, thank you, thank you again. Thank you.